Rise of Kingdoms is implementing new commanders, a new civilization, a new game mode, and more, and today we're going to be talking about it. So I'm sure you guys have seen these images that were posted by the official Rise of Kingdoms social media accounts. We see two new commanders coming to the game and we also have this post which talks about a ton of new stuff that we're going to unpack here in this video. But guys, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click that bell because we talked about a lot of these leaks in a video like three weeks ago. So if you guys missed that video, you want to subscribe to the channel and click that bell because we're going to keep talking about leaks content in advance. And I talked about a lot of other stuff in this video and I feel like it's just more likely to be true now that some of the things we've discussed have already been proven to be coming into the game now we also saw two new legendary cavalry commanders come into the game as well and would you know it i already talked about this in a leak so guys make sure you like the video make sure you subscribe click the bell and with that being said let's jump into today's content so i've got some fancy sparkling water here i love the taste of static in the morning now the first thing i want to talk about is the two commanders that we see here now as you can see by uh, some of the comments over here on the side a lot of players think that these are are Viking commanders. Now, as I mentioned in my civilization leak video, there are leaks and rumors coming out that are saying that it's very, 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 very likely that the new civilization is in fact a Viking themed civilization. So I don't know exactly which civ it's going to be, but it is true. I do think uh, pretty much all signs are pointing towards Viking, not only because these I mean, just look at these guys, right? Look at them with the massive beards and all that stuff. It looks pretty much uh, identical to the art style that we see over here on Harold. And everybody knows Harold is the last Viking. So I think we're going to see a lot of uh, Viking themed things coming into the game very, very soon, which is exciting. We also see in this post here where they're talking about playing with the idea of sea battles, right? So naval battles. And to me, that just screams Viking, right? Like the Viking uh, theme and civilizations and the lore surrounding surrounding Vikings is is very much centered on traveling the seas right so I think it would make sense to implement uh, Viking themed commanders and again just looking at them that seems to be uh, what they were going for. And of course, you can see the text right here. It says from the Loire and onto the world. Now, I didn't know what a Loire was or what the Loire is. I have no idea, but it's basically, this says it's the longest river in France and third, 171st longest in the world. Wow. There's a lot of long rivers, Jesus. So again, I'm all in on the Viking theme and the Viking civilization coming soon to the game. A lot of players are asking like, what do you think the buffs are going to be for the civilization? A lot of people are begging for infantry and I agree. I hope that this is a infantry based uh, civilization who knows what they have planned and how it's going to fit into the meta of all the other civilizations. Now, everybody knows that civilizations are micro optimizations. They make small differences. And so, you know, when you're in the end game, that's when you really want to focus on them. So, you know, it's probably not going to make too much of a difference, but Hey, I'm excited to see the art style for some of these buildings. And I just think that, you know, we haven't had a new civ in a very long time. So it's a very exciting thing to have implemented into the game. Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that they have confirmed that these of these two commanders one is a legendary and one is actually an epic and obviously the epic is probably the epic that comes with this new civilization but i have some theories as to the legendary so i don't know who the legendary is going to be i don't know if it's actually even worth discussing right it doesn't really matter who it is what matters is the mechanics the skills on that guy the talent trees all that good stuff and also how do we get this new commander so one theory that i have is that it could be sort of like a dao chan and lubu type of synergy between these two commanders right because because usually we don't see an epic and a legendary implemented at the same time, right? Like it makes sense for them to implement an epic commander because they're implementing a new civilization. But why would they implement a legendary at the same time, right? Usually you would want to see uh, the content spread out over time because that just keeps hype up in the community. Like, oh, there's new things happening. There's new things coming, right? Things like that. So the fact that they're releasing both at the same time, uh, to me, leads me to believe that maybe they are sort of interlocked, right? They're sort of interconnected and associated in some way beyond just being from the same civilization right because again you know when they implement new commanders just because they're from the same civilization that doesn't mean that they have to drop them at the same time right so to me it could be the case that perhaps they um, have some sort of synergy which I think is an interesting thing to explore now again obviously if we come over here and we take a look at uh, Lubu and Dao Chen. They obviously have really nice synergy here, but the problem is that when you are pairing an epic and a legendary, typically the epic is so uh, so much less powerful that you know the 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 synergy would have to be so good that would that it would make that legendary so powerful that it would be worth sacrificing that secondary commander slot 
uh, you know because obviously you could pair it with some other super powerful legendary and then there you go so i think it would be interesting for them to continue to explore this idea of commander pairings and having synergy between the two and i think this is something that the community really wants right i think the community wants a really powerful or a really usable epic commander because we haven't seen powerful epic commanders since the beginning of the game this game has been out for like what almost three years now or something like that uh, and the best commanders are still the ones that started in the game right sun tzu joan of arc those are really the the heavy hitters when it comes to powerful epics so we want to see more powerful epics i think that's what the community wants and hopefully if there's an epic that has powerful synergy with a legendary then perhaps that would be the the way of appeasing the community now my next video on this channel is going to be a video talking about my favorite legendary and epic pairings so if you guys are interested in legendary and epic pairings and rise of kingdoms make sure you subscribe to the channel click that bell and like this video so that way i know that that's content you're interested in now one other thing i want to talk about about these commanders is actually something that popped up in the game completely randomly the other day completely randomly we saw an ethel fled event drop in the game like literally out of nowhere they didn't announce it they didn't do it i was just literally playing the game i was on voice call with uh some of my friends from rise of kingdoms and one of them pan shout out to panda was like hey what's this ethel flood thing and i'm like what are you talking about so i reloaded the game and this popped up and if you click the claim button you get 10 ethel flood sculptures for free right which you know um hello this commander's been out forever so there has to be a reason why this event started right there's got to be a reason why ethel flood has her own 60 day event now my theory is that they're going to be removing ethel flood from the campaign metal store that's my theory because hear me out ethel flood is a really good legendary commander like she's actually really powerful she's very good but there's only one way to get her right the only way to get her is through expedition so my assumption is that perhaps they're going to be removing ethel flood from expedition in favor of a new legendary commander hello this all lines up perhaps they're removing her in favor of a new legendary commander but they want to make sure that all the new players in the game have ample time to get ethel fled so they're just giving her out for free everybody who's playing the game right now gets 10 free sculptures which is enough to summon her and then who knows what they're going to do with ethel flood after that right i would hate to see her be completely removed from the from the metal store or things like that because you know again she is a powerful commander i think new players really would want to have her and and benefit from having her uh in their arsenal so one thing that they could do is just replace ethel flood here with whoever this new viking legendary is going to be and then the only way to get her moving forward would be from the treasure of the warrior queen chests which means you would have to push pretty far into the expedition before you can start getting a significant amount of these every single day and that again that would make sense as to why they're giving ethel flood away for free because the easiest way to get her honestly is just by spending this currency here you could just you know beat a bunch of the earlier stages and accumulate all those points and stuff like that but it's not until you get to stage 30 here that you actually uh can get her from the treasure of the warrior queen and also that you're not really guaranteed you can get silver keys from this and stuff like that as well so one possibility is that they remove her from here put in a new viking legendary commander and then you can only get uh, ethel fled from these chests now the downside of this is that it's going to be very difficult to get or to expertise that new viking legendary if you can only get three sculptures per day right like we're talking about a very long time to expertise that commander at three sculptures per day so one other thing that they could do is remove ethel fled from here and remove her from these chests and they could replace these chests with treasure of the viking king or something like that right uh that's something that they could implement and then all of a sudden there's no way to get ethel flood moving forward now again i don't think that they would do that because ethel flood's a really good commander that i think a lot of players you know want to use so who knows maybe she'll be on a monthly rotation or a bi-monthly rotation or maybe they'll do my worst fear which is throw her in the gold keys please lord god do not put ethel flood in the gold keys jesus christ another thing that they could do is leave ethel fled for all of these treasure of the warrior queens and then add you know 10 more uh expedition modes here and then a couple of them will include new branch off events like these rally and defending ones which will give you chest of the viking king or whatever it's going to be called uh and so then there will be 
two legendary commander chests up on this map at all times first it will be ethel fled up until stage 70 and then past stage 80 there will be maybe a couple of expedition stages that will get you the chests for whatever the new free legendary is going to be now again this is technically all speculation right all that we know is that there's a new legendary and a new epic coming to the game the new epic is going to be implemented with the civilization the question is how is the new legendary going to be implemented and i think that this event with ethel fled and ending in 60 days is our biggest clue as to how they're going to be implementing this new legendary Viking commander. Now let's talk about this post here, because this is also really interesting. This first image, it, you know, we can kind of zoom in here a little bit. It's hard here on Instagram, uh, but it says a brand new game mode, which emphasizes on instant matchmaking and team effort will soon be launched. That is exciting. Now, of course there was just the player summit where we did see five V five battles happening uh, against two different red team and blue team, which is really interesting interesting I didn't really watch any of that content I don't really know what that game mode looks like I don't know if it actually looks like this or if it's something else completely so that's one thing to keep in mind but this is really cool right I think a new game mode is something that rise of kingdoms has really really needed if you guys have tuned into my live streams when I'm playing rise of kingdoms you know after about an hour or so I'm kind of out of content right there's really not much to do if you want to just play rise of kingdoms right you log in during reset you know if it's not kvk and it's not ark of osiris you know there's only a couple of events that come around once in a while you know sorority crisis things like that which are fun um you know golden kingdom whatnot but you know besides that if you just want to play the game rise of kingdoms there's only a few game modes right there's like you know the the sunset canyon which you only get a couple of attempts per day uh and then besides that you're just grinding barbs right so i think a new game mode is really exciting um the player summit that we did see the other day between the two red team and blue team was again it was a 5v5 matchup so I think that this kind of sounds like that, right? You know, if you join the game, it's a 5v5. And I'm pretty sure the objective of that game mode was to, um, you know, burn the other team first. Uh, but I, again, I don't really know a ton about that. I probably should take a, a deeper look. Um, but a new game mode, uh, nonetheless, is exciting. Now, here, the second thing is a new civilization in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, we did talk about in my uh, leak video the other day, um, about three weeks ago, that there are a couple of confirmed civilizations, civilizations that are ready to be implemented into the game so this only says that one is coming so it's a little bit of a letdown right because again we do know that there's at least two civilizations that are literally ready to be implemented into the game like they're already ready to go right so the fact that they're not releasing them means that they probably want to plan something big around them and so perhaps they're going to do you know this is going to be a big viking themed release for a new civilization and then maybe six to 12 months from now we'll see a big you know greece themed civilization coming into the game or something along those lines so that's interesting now finally we see this post which is really intriguing it says we are also exploring whether they're uh, exploring whether there are other ways to go besides the combat mechanics such as sea battles and other diverse forms of combat mechanics so this is really exciting now i think this last bullet point is probably the the piece of the puzzle that is the farthest out right if they're exp if they're experimenting with combat mechanics that's a that's a game changer right like that's a big implementation into the game and so i think this last bullet point is going to be the thing that we see last right uh, they were probably going to see this months from now uh, so they're just kind of teasing it here which is exciting right it's exciting but um, we probably won't hear more about this for a while in my opinion um, now of course free movement in the open fields is interesting if you guys didn't play the game very long that you used to not be able to move around freely in the open field right uh, but they tested it first with expedition then they implemented it into like Ark of Osiris and the base game which was a game changer right it's a game changer I think the combat mechanics of rise of kingdoms are what set it far and above of every other uh, game like this on the marketplace right now right lots of games are emulating rise of kingdoms but the thing that makes rise of kingdoms stand out amongst all the competition is the open field combat right the fact that you can move your troops around wherever you want to go uh, retreat them send them out keep fighting in the open field it's it's what make it's like the, it's the secret sauce of rise of kingdoms so if they are you know implementing something new here again this is huge and so i think it's going to take a while before it comes in my my expectation is that perhaps we're going to see naval battles in the expedition first right and again we can go back here i think perhaps there's an opportunity if you scroll down here you only see ocean right so perhaps we'll come here we'll get some sort of events here and then who knows maybe we'll go down here and we'll sail across the sea and there will be new combat mechanics involving open sea battles open sea battles would be super hyped i used to play 
a, a couple of different games just like rise of kingdoms that were naval themed i used to play a pirates of the caribbean uh, themed game just like rise of kingdoms it still exists i think it came out when the most recent movie came out which was a while ago so it's kind of an old game now but people still play it it was actually pretty fun it got very pay to win very fast because it's developed by you know a big triple a whatever who cares there was also I, I don't remember what the other one was but there was another one where you customized your entire pirate ship which was really really cool so i love the idea of naval battle in rise of kingdoms and again i think rise of kingdoms does open field combat better than any other mobile game at the moment so i think if anyone's going to do it right it's going to be lilith which is very very exciting and again i think they'll probably experiment with it in the expedition first if it's good perhaps they'll implement it into the base game how that's going to work i don't know it would involve a huge overhaul of these maps right um maybe not the entire map but just how rivers and and these little ponds work perhaps they'll make them even larger perhaps you'll only be able to 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 cross them if you have boats right so there's a lot of things that uh, this implies this implies that we're going to eventually be able to fight in open sea or at least on rivers right which is something to be excited about but how is that going to work are we going to have to have a boat dock building that we'll have to construct and level up to level 25 right that could be something that comes into the game or is it just going to be an automatic thing like if you click and drag across the river the boat will just appear and you'll just cross the river that would be kind of boring but guys one thing is for sure and that is when these leaks come out i will be talking about them here on this channel so if you guys don't want to miss any rise of kingdoms leaks or updates make sure you subscribe to the channel click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video like this video it helps the channel a ton i'm not just saying that it's the best way to support my content and then you'll be one of the first to know when i release leak content guys if you're excited about all of these things and all of these changes coming to rise of kingdoms comment them down below i would love to have a discussion about all of this down there as always my social media links are in the description below as well so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter discord facebook all that stuff it's always down below as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks and it's my favorite way to play rise of kingdoms and if we're going to be getting naval battles you can best believe that the best way to play that type of gameplay and that type of content is going to be on a big screen and blue stacks lets you do that absolutely for free so click the link in the description download it now get your feet wet and then when that content comes into the game you'll be ready and used to the program with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc we'll talk to you guys again soon peace